All right, good morning. Here is Jack. He's coming to hang out. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get started because we're just fucking around at this point. I've got a couple things that I finished up making to get this motor fully timed. Uh, not just like timed on the little uh, timing marks on my ATI dampener, like uh, I'll show you, but actually timed with like a dial gauge and going against the top of the piston through the spark plug hole so we can hit like the perfect TDC, check it on the pulley, make sure everything's aligned with my marker. And then we can make sure the cams are perfectly set at that TDC so we can just check that off the list and move forward. Basically, this is a little bit overkill and I'll show you why, but it's nice to have the tools to be able to do it. And it's something that I'm gonna be able to provide because it turned out it was a pretty easy little thing to make. Uh, and I'll just have it machined much nicer so that it's something we can use. All right. So, to get started, uh, we'll put this in to uh, cylinder one spark plug hole. Essentially, it is just a, here, I'll go press it on the table. It acts as the top of the piston at TDC. Uh, we couldn't you normally use these on the BMWs because of how deep that spark plug hole is. See, but uh, just hammered a 15 mil 12 point onto it, drilled that out a little bit so it doesn't get interfere with the hole, and we're ready to go. So I've got the uh, crank set just before TDC, probably 25 degrees or 30 degrees before. You see the cams are about to come into line, so we are correct on TDC on the head, and uh, we will set this up here and get started. First off, drop him in. This thing goes all the way up into itself, so and it's shorter than a spark plug, so it won't damage anything, thankfully. Uh, we'll spin that all the way down to where we can see the gold thing starting to poke out. Cool. This is my homemade dial indicator stand. I saved a whopping $30 uh, by breaking an old uh, soldering uh, stand and welding one of my GoPro magnets to it. Nice, clear contact. Not gonna interfere or catch anything. If you look down in there, you can see it's just kind of resting on top of the gold piece in there. Yeah, it's a little tight, huh? Yeah, perfect. So we'll tear this out. Now, of course, this number, it's not like, it's not like we're looking for a specific number. We're looking for a rise to where the number caps itself and then starts to fall and that's how we'll know when uh, we're at TDC. So again, we're 25 degrees or so before it, so this should start rising as I go on this pulley. There we go. All right, we're coming close to TDC now. We should be at it here. 164. 164. Now let me move another degree. If you go another degree while at TDC, what do we have? 164. At? Still 164? So that is TDC right there. There is about a two degree, that's the cool part of having this dial gauge. I can show you here. Uh, when you have a pulley like this with actual markings, and remember guys, of course, this is meant to be at uh, a degree to angle like that because the motor's normally turned. You can see right when you're about to hit TDC and the degree before it and TDC itself and possibly the one after, we'll check as we move on are the same deck height of the piston. So, although it's really nice to be able to have this lined up perfectly like it is here, it's also kind of good to know that if you don't have a really nice pulley dial indicator, if you have the OEM crank marker, which you, I don't see, so I have to paint mark, if as long as it put, looks basically perfectly lined up, don't stress, you have it, well, as long as your cams are also at TDC as well. But as long as that's lined up with your OEM crank marker, you should be good enough. So we brought it up to TDC. We watched it on the dial gauge. We know we are within that two degree or one degree area where we are at top dead center completely. We are lined up on our crank with our markings and with my little aftermarket tip pointing down onto the aftermarket damper. Uh, so we can go ahead and see if the cams line up. And if the cams line up when that's at perfect TDC, then we really know that this motor is ready to go. 
Uh, we'll start with the exhaust cam block. Uh, this is a M50 non vanus intake cam that uh, we took and machined just like a mill off of the front face so that it fits onto that gear. And uh, we mounted it with this offset and it acts like the exhaust cam of an S52. And it's for, for, you know, and it's free. You just have to do that little bit of machining, like 50 bucks with my buddy. Uh, and then we turn around and we slide one of these on. All right. So if we look here, as long as this is lined up when we set this down, then that, oh yeah, that's lined up. Let's check the uh, advanced four degrees for this block. Uh, this is a M54 intake cam. So it's both intake cams, but this one's out of an M50 non vanus This one is out of an M54. Uh, this one, we cut the snout on. Uh, you have to shave the snout down, the gear on it, or the splines on it, so that it accepts a single Vanos instead of the dual Vanos on the M54. And then it mounts normally, straight up and down here, but we advance it by four degrees. Ooh, yep, nicely lined up as well. Here, I'll slip this back up so you can see. I mean, that's after we turned the motor over a whole bunch of times and then brought it back to TDC with dial gauge. This is timed. We'll close it up. I am very, very, very happy with that. I do not doubt in my mind for one second that there's any issues with the timing assembly now. Everything's locked in. Uh, we've got uh, all sorts of new chain tensioners and things like that. Nothing's ever gonna move around. I think this motor's gonna be just fine. And if it's not, I'll build another one, guys. I'm not like, it's not like it's end all of the world. If this blows up, I will sell you my 1J. Yeah, exactly. I love that. We can put the freaking uh, valve cover on now and the gaskets and stuff. And clean up and gasket it real quick and we'll get it all put together. And then all we have left to do is waiting on some fittings for an aluminum bung to come in so I can weld one into the pan for a new drain. So it's like no smoking at all. Like a really, we've got the lineup perfect. Uh, these are all things that we're making into this kit for the spa manifold. Uh, and then after that, uh, we're we'll ready to uh, put it together. So we'll clean up the gasket. Again, this is an overkill way to essentially time your assembly, but it's a great way to visually show you guys how to and uh, what you're trying to accomplish in the process. So thanks again. We'll see you guys on the next one. Good things automotive.